I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Meta Parlikar, the CEO of Casper Labs. Meta, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today and thank you for taking the time to be here. Likewise, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. You're very welcome. Let's kick it off by getting a brief introduction of Casper Labs. Could you please give us a short explanation of what is Casper Labs and why you and your team believe that it is the de future of decentralization? Absolutely. So we are building a layer one public decentralized blockchain that implements Vlad Zamfir's CBC Casper proof of stake consensus system. And this completely eliminates proof of work as a means of securing the network. Um, Casper relies on economics, incentives and slashing to secure the network and keep participants honest. So once you eliminate the hashing exercise from the protocol, you get quite a bit of computational efficiency, not to mention the inherent throttling mechanism that is associated with proof of work. And as you know, there's a lot of excitement in the blockchain space. And you know the two leading blockchains out there are Bitcoin and Ethereum. And of course, they're fully decentralized, right? Um, and there's a reason for this is, you know, the value proposition of blockchain really comes from being completely decentralized and permissionless. That's where you get the security and the, you know, what I like to refer to fault tolerance around the transactions. You know, the transactions been validated by all these random nodes. Um, so what's happening, though, is they're not very scalable. Right. And it doesn't matter so much for Bitcoin that it not be scalable because, we don't use gold to transact, you know, in day to day. So layer two solutions will work for Bitcoin. But with Ethereum, where you're actually running computer programs on the blockchain, you need more performance, right? You need to know that your uh, computational request, whatever you sent in, has been processed within a reasonable amount of time. And so we see um, our platform as being able to provide that kind of throughput that's necessary for real world use cases on the blockchain. <clears throat> That's a great explanation. And I know it can get very technical. A lot of people uh, in traditional finance are still learning about the differences between Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the intricacies involved with Ethereum and what we can do by integrating these programming languages. And uh, some people that have used it have experienced those scaling issues, myself included, that you mentioned where it just doesn't have the capability right now to have the throughput of transactions to support uh, not just everyone in the world, but even just in North America, it really doesn't have to support businesses doing transactions every day. So for the people that do know a little bit about Ethereum, what, uh, is what you're saying is that Casper is really a complementary service that's going to upgrade Ethereum, or is it going to be having its own blockchain in a competitive-like manner? How does that fit into the Ethereum ecosystem? Yeah, so you know, we see ourselves as being able to do the research and take the risk that Ethereum cannot, because Ethereum is supporting. They have a lot of users on it. There's, there's, they have, um, you know, a lot of capital that has, you know, been developed against Ethereum. And so, as a project becomes larger and larger, even if a, even a company, right? You think about. Um, Let's, let's even step outside of the blockchain space. If you look at traditional companies, the larger a company gets, the more market capitalization it has. It's very natural that it's harder, and it, as it should be, slower for it to adopt uh, high-risk changes. Um, as you're aware, there is no CBC Casper protocol in production today. And this makes it a very risky proposition. And we see ourselves um, as, a, as a young, scrappy startup uh, being very well suited to do this kind of research work and take those risks to bring to life uh, Vlad Zamfir's uh, CBC protocol. Um, and once it's live, I fully expect that uh, other blockchains out there will want to adopt the protocol once they see um, how it works and, and they have a running implementation of it. That's great, Meta. Yeah, there's been scaling issues in Ethereum, or at least people have been working on it. Vlad's been working on this for many years now, I believe. Was this something that came up right when Ethereum said, hey, we need to start working on scaling? Um, how long has the project been in incubation for? Casper Labs was founded in uh, November of 2018, but the team has been working on the CBC protocol for a little over a year. Uh, so we have a good, you know, myself and our lead developers, we have a really good understanding of what it takes to implement the protocol. These things do take time. Um, but yeah, we've been working on it for quite some time. I know Vlad's been working on it for three or four years, but we got involved in early 2018. That's great. And as you mentioned before, because Ethereum is, uh, you know, a multi-billion dollar market cap already, 
to make substantial changes is very risky. It's sort of like all of the dApps that have been already been developed on the current proof of work system. And then it's going to be moving to this new consensus algorithm called proof of stake. For those people that are just learning about these different consensus algorithms, is Casper Labs integration with Ethereum, is that in line with them moving over to the proof of stake consensus or is that a separate uh, thing altogether? Right. So we are building a separate blockchain, right? So our goal is to build a decentralized layer one computational infrastructure that is based on the blockchain technology. Um, we believe that um, the research that we are doing and once the implementation is live, it'll be very complementary to what Ethereum is doing. Our blockchain um, is different in many ways um, from the Ethereum 2.0 project. Um, Ethereum is taking an iterative approach to implementing proof of stake. Um, in principle, proof of stake basically means you put up some token as a validator if you or a miner. If I want to participate in the network, I procure some tokens and I put those in a, in a wallet that's locked away as, as a bond. And if I similarly, as you talk about bondsmen today and, and you know, um, you put a bond up and if you uh, engage in malfeasant behavior, your bond is slashed, right? There's an economic disincentive to bad behavior. And proof of stake systems follow this, follow this same basic principle. Most of the proof of stake systems that you see out there today are what we call delegated proof of stake. So what that means is that um, the community votes on who gets to mine and who gets to in be included in the protocol. That's, that's what we call DPoS. Um, Casper is very different in that validators can come and go from the network as they choose. So it is completely permissionless, completely decentralized, and there are other mechanisms um, by which the system reaches consensus versus saying, you know, these, you know, t these X number of validators are inherently trusted and they're all honest uh, for the most part. In, in Casper, people can come and go as they need, which we believe is a key tenant to decentralization. That's the key property that both Bitcoin and Ethereum have. That's very interesting, Meta. Yeah, and I see what you mean about the, the delegated proof of stake. It depends on how comfortable people are with the different levels of decentralization. And they say that there's always a trade-off between a certain level of decentralization and scalability, or so we've seen so far, but that may change, right? That's, that is our goal. I mean, our assertion is that um, you don't have to sacrifice decentralization for scalability. And those are the trade-offs that have been made till date. Um, people have been, in essence, trading off decentralization for scalability because it's hard. It's a hard problem to solve. Um, now, from my perspective, I believe that there are a set of use cases that are really critical to put on a public uh, permissionless decentralized blockchain. And those use cases don't necessarily need to have a very, very high transaction throughput. I believe that there are a class of use cases where maybe you don't need as much decentralization and you want to trade off for a little bit more centralization um, for speed. But our focus is really that the heart of the public permissionless blockchain, it, the key value proposition is that it's a trustless network. And the moment you centralize that, you basically put a stake in the heart of like the number one value proposition that blockchain brings to bear. That's great. So you guys have been working really hard since November, I'm sure, on the development of the blockchain. What does the development roadmap look like in the next six months? And what are the major milestones that are coming up in terms of the testnet running? Are there people able to run nodes? And then when does the mainnet go live? I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, for sure. So we will have a public DevNet that will be going live this summer. Um, this will enable DAP developers to connect to the network, bond and unbond from the network if they so choose, um, and, ex and interact with the network and test their applications against the network. Today, you can go to our GitHub and download our Node software and run the Node locally and um, experience uh, writing Rust code and deploying smart contracts. We do use WASM. We use WebAssembly. Um, and that gives us the broadest base in terms of, you know, programming languages that you can write smart contracts in. Um, but the software is available today. We release software every month. We are taking very much a professional production engineering approach to our software. We want it to be robust and scalable and um, easy to maintain and manage from a, a node operator perspective. And Testnet, we hope, will be later this year. 
we have a very aggressive uh, roadmap and we are on track to achieving that. That's great, Meta. And for those developers that are looking to get involved, what is the long-term vision that they should see from your team in you know two years from now? What does Casper Labs look like? Is the main net running? It's, we see a scalable Ethereum. What else would we see as the project comes to fruition? Yeah, definitely we see mainnet running in two years. I'm very optimistic that that will happen. And we will see a lot of um, something very similar to Ethereum, I think, that does provide scale. You'll see fantastic developer tools. Um, I take user experience very seriously. And I believe that the user experience um, is somewhat lackluster. I hope to see great and broad support for mobile accounts and mobile wallets. Um, you know, the ability to store private keys on a mobile device is, is, is seminal, I think, for a DAP developer. Um, you'll see great tools for middleware, um, both putting, uh, putting information on the blockchain, but equally importantly, getting information out of the blockchain. I think that right now you kind of send your transaction to Ethereum and they kind of just disappear into, you know, they, they land on the blockchain, but getting any state information out of, the, out of the global computer is very difficult. So we see ourselves as building a fantastic ecosystem for developer tools and DAP developer tools, as well as a growing, uh, growing adoption of the blockchain and, and new and great features such as homogenous sharding and side chains as well. Amazing. I really appreciate, Meta, that you guys are focusing on user experience and mobile first as well. And that's part of the reason why some of the popular exchanges and dApps are popular is because there isn't a lot of user experience focus. It's very developer focused and there are a lot of barriers to entry that come with that when you have very technical software to not be able to provide a good experience. It really doesn't allow you to grow the project to the mainstream. I think that's exactly right. You know, I, I came, I kind of grew out of the music revolution. So I was one of the senior executives at mp3.com. And I remember the day when you had have these little mp3 players, right? And you could get content on the mp3 player, but it took like about 12 steps to get your content from a CD onto the mp3 player. Mm -hmm. And mp3s and digital music didn't really hit the broad, broad base until iTunes and the iPod came out, right? And what did that actually do? All they addressed was user experience. And they made it so, so easy for anybody to, you know, experience the digital music revolution. And I think the sa absolutely the same thing applies here, right? Um, I think to get broad adoption, you need to have a really, really easy, delightful, integrated user experience for adapt developers. You need to have mobile support for accounts and wallets for end users. And I think if, if, we can package something up and, and solve a scalability problem. I think we've got a winning solution. That's a great analogy, Meta. Thank you. Now, one thing that I just saw recently was Vitalik Buterin and Vlad Zamfir were speaking at the Stanford Blockchain Conference about CBC Casper Labs. What was the general message there to the audience? Yeah, so I think the general message is that they recognize that scalability is a real issue, right? Um, and uh, Vitalik laid out his plans for Ethereum 2.0 and how Ethereum intends to iterate right from where they are today to a much more performance solution. He described in detail um, what the architecture of Ethereum 2.0 looks like, um, both from the beacon chain. He also described the transition plan for the validators um, and how they can transition their Ethereum from proof, of, you know, being a proof of work validator miner to a proof of stake uh, miner. And, and, you know, Vlad's speech was very much, his, his talk was very much in alignment with that, where he described in detail the CBC um, sharded consensus protocol, right? Casper um, enables itself to, to be sharded in a homogenous way. Um, and that's slightly different from side chains, right? When you talk about side chains, you're talking about a whole other blockchain, a whole other consensus protocol, whereas homogenous sharding really talks about a single, a single blockchain that is now Set, splitting up the computational load across nodes. And that's very different from a side chain. <clears throat> very it, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are, are, is your team right now re really just looking for more developer help? Uh, or are you expanding the team for people to join? Uh, how can people help with this initiative? Gosh, the most important thing I would say is I would love to have people building dApps against the system. Um, that puts 
our APIs under pressure, right? We really want to know just how hard it is for a DAP developer to work with our blockchain. Um, we need that end user feedback. Um, that's what's really going to drive the user experience, right? So if it takes them seven steps to build and deploy their application, I'm going to go back to my team and say, okay, how can we how can we distill the seven steps down to three steps? How can we make it easier? How can we provide them better error messages, better uh, interaction with the system? So DAP developers and people that um, that are looking to program and code against a blockchain, we would love to hear your feedback. That's amazing. And are you guys running into any obstacles or challenges as you continue this development? Is it just more manpower needed, or is it managing the user experience along with the development? What are your main roadblocks as you continue working towards the test net? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I indicated that we're looking for DAP developers that want to work against the platform. And, you know, the space is really saturated with blockchain projects right now, right? So I think that's that's a big challenge is what's going to draw people into Casper Labs. I believe that we have amazing technology that we're building on to see the promise of you know, the consensus protocol, and we are using a, you know, a best practice, like a, not best practice, but widely adopted execution engine with WASM, with WebAssembly, and the parity tools. So we are trying to cast as wide a net as we can, but I think it's a real challenge because there's a lot of options out there for DAP developers today in terms of which blockchain project they want to deploy their application on. Definitely. And if developers are looking to learn more about Casper Labs or get involved, what is the best way to find out more information and contact the team? Find us on our website, casperlabs.io, and check us out on GitHub at Casper Labs. Awesome. Thank you very much, Meta Parlikar, CEO of Casper Labs. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I'm looking forward to watching the growth of Casper Labs in the coming months. And uh, we'll follow up then to see how the project is growing. And thank you so much for your time today. Likewise. Thanks a bunch, Ashton. Bye-bye.